Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the Cyber Union. Today we're going to talk about something that's fun, something near and dear to my heart, which is hacking stuff, right? Who doesn't like to do that? Um, this actually comes from a request from a buddy of mine who is talking about starting up his OSCP journey. Uh, it is amazing, sir. Um, for any of those interested, it's a lot of fun. Uh, this time we're going to talk about the methodology. For me, that was the biggest piece to my success was having a methodology. So we're going to talk about that today on this episode on the Cyber Union. Awesome. Alright, so I wrote a blog this week um, that kind of covered some of this. So this, um, this video is going to go in a little more depth and I'm going to tell you what was going through my mind while I was writing it. Um, so if you don't know, there's there's a hacker methodology, and we see it everywhere. It's called like the kill chain. There's multiple names for it, uh, but it's basically the process you walk through from the re reconnaissance of a system all the way through the exploitation um, and complete compromise of a system. So and there's a bunch of little steps in between, um, and you use that while you're doing OSCP, right? Because that's what you're doing. You're hacking stuff. Um, so you use a hacker methodology. Um, so let's talk about some of those steps. That initial enumeration, I can't stress how, how much this will mean to your success, your ability to enumerate information. I mean, we're talking about um, IP addresses, host names of systems, services running on them, what version of that service running. This is all information that is gonna to lead to your success and compromising a system because you really can't do any any of these other steps unless you know your target and you know it well. I mean, going from that um, to exploitation, I'm just looking over the blog now so I can talk about it. I mean, you have to check for vulnerabilities, but you can't check for vulnerabilities if you don't have a version. Um, you don't even know what the service is. It's, it's hard to find a vulnerability that's going to be a fit for it because a lot of them are written for a very specific um, version and subversion, right? Like 7-1 or 7.1 rather. Uh, and if it's 7.2, it's not going to work. So you have to know these kind of things. So being able to do that and then validate that those services are indeed what's running using something like Netcat to just get a banner grab is going to help you be more successful. Um, talking about more enumeration for web apps, that's a whole nother discipline, right? Because you got to make sure you understand your, your proxy that you're using. I recommend Zap if you don't have one in mind because it's free. Um, and you have to understand how web requests work, how the web server is interpreting this data you're sending it, how cookies work, how DNS resolves. These are things you need to understand because you're interfering with that whole process when you use a transparent proxy because you're stopping your data from going to that system, manipulating it, and then sending it over. So you need to understand, you need to understand how web services work. Uh, so make sure you study that. I have a couple of tools listed besides Zap, such as Derby. Uh, Derby is a brute force tool, and you can use it to enumerate files um, on a server. Very important because that's one of the big issues. They have um, files with inappropriate permissions added. So like maybe it's a system config file that only the admin should have access to uh, back on the actual server, but it's open to the web. That's a big problem. And that should be something you can find, hopefully, right? Um, and then you have Nikto. That kind of is a low level uh, vulnerability scanner, if you will, and it'll find some uh, misconfigurations. And, but it's a good, good litmus test for a server when you first get on it. Um, if you read one of my other blogs or pages on my website, it talks about some commands you can run. Nmap has some good NSE scripts also to do some really good testing. Um, and then, of course, depending on the type of service running on the web server, there's other tools specific to that. So again, enumeration, got to do it, got to do it well. Um, now, some after you do exploit, your exploitation, you do what's called post-exploit or post-exploitation activities. This is things you do after you got your initial foothold. Um, one of the things people often overlook is, hey, I got a shell, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing all this stuff, and then their shell dies. Because a lot of times where we get 
I call it a janky shell. It's a really um, terrible, um, you can't interact, it's not an interactive shell and we want to escalate that to an interactive shell. Um, so that is one of the first things I do because it allows me to create a stable connection I can better utilize on that system. Then of course maybe you want to put it in a back door somewhere, um, run a service so you can connect to it if you get disconnected for whatever reason. Uh, so like the big story there is create a stable connection so that you can get back on if you need to and you can run all the commands that you want to run. Um, besides that, don't forget reconnaissance after you've taken over a system. There's a lot of really yummy files on the systems with passwords, um, configurations, things like that that are just sitting there waiting for you to look for them. Um, besides that, you need to be looking for files, other files with just inappropriate permissions, um, miscon misconfigured permissions on files and folders because um, we may be able to use a tool that's specifically for the admin, but we can get it to run one of our, it's be, still being used by the admin under their credentials, but we can get it to run one of all f our files, which is almost an instant win to admin level privileges. So again, reconnaissance is a big deal, even before and after exploitation. Um, there are some tools you can load up. There's some Python scripts um, you can load and drop on the box and it'll do all that kind of enumeration. That's the easy way to do it. <laughs> I'll put a link to one of the ones I use. Uh, it's definitely the laziest man, lazy man's way to do it, but hey, do what you want to do, right? Um, so some other things you need to do once you, during that post exploitation, you need to figure out who you are, right? Who am I? That's one of the first things you, you uh, type in that command line. And then uh, what privileges you have. If you already have admin privileges, you're golden. You can dump memory and do all kind of whatever you want, and you can start migrating through the network. Uh, but if not, it'll still tell you kind of what you do have access to, um, so you can game plan for how to get to that level you want to get to. Um, with privilege escalation, I mean, let's talk about that because we're already kind of tiptoeing around that privilege escalation. We're trying to get to a higher level access, so admin or root depending on what operating system you're in. Um, and a lot of times with Linux, kernel exploits, they're, they're pretty golden for Linux systems. Um, again, misconfigured files, that's an easy win. Um, there's some binaries that give you easy wins too, like Vim has, a, has an issue where you can escalate privileges with that. Uh, and same with Nmap, if it's on the host. Some Linux hosts have it for whatever reason. Um, so look for those things and don't overlook the easy wins. Um, a lot of times we try to be fancy and work for hours on some kind of crazy exploit, but a lot of times it's the easy stuff like default passwords, default credentials, um, no credentials, right? Um, these things are easy wins that a lot of times we overlook because we assume the system administrator is, is more uh, hardworking than that, right? We don't assume the administrator is lazy. We assume they've taken all these precautions already, but that is a false assumption. Um, a lot of times, it, even in the real world, they've stood up a service or a server really quick and they've forgotten to configure it, or they're just testing it now, whatever. Whatever the reason was, they didn't get around to fixing it. It's, it happens in the OSCP environment, and it happens in real life. Don't don't not test these basic things. They're there um, and they're everywhere. They're really prevalent. Um, so um, do those kind of things. Now let's talk about practice. So uh, you're probably gonna pay, I think it's like, what, 1,200, 2,000 bucks or something like that for OSCP. I hadn't checked um, recently. But it's a lot of money, right? And you're usually going for about three months worth of lab access. So get your practice in before you drop that money because it's gonna make that investment more valuable because you're already going in with a good baseline of knowledge and now you're just stacking experience on top of that. So that's definitely the way to go. And you can do that through, um, there's a lot of VMs that are made to replicate some of the stuff you're gonna see in the OSCP. Um, and then there's a lot of CTFs that kind of um, replicate that like hack the box is one that's really well known uh, and there's a couple of more other ones um, but look down in the notes below and I'm gonna have a link to um, abachi.com who has a really good list of 
um, bone hubs to hop into and, and test. And the bone hubs, if you don't know, it's just a, um, it's where a bunch of vulnerable VMs are stored. And a lot of times they have walkthroughs for them, almost all the time actually. So if you're really new to that, this is a good way for you to get in the mind of someone else who's done this before and you can learn and take notes from that experience. So it's, it's a really good way to get that experience and um, hands-on um, work in there. Uh, but other than that, um, like I said, this is from a request, uh, this video. So if there's something you want to see, let me know. Drop a comment down below. If you like the video, you know, definitely give me a like and share this out to other people that may be starting their journey. Uh, Let's hear from you, what you found useful, what you didn't. And last but not least, check out the blog. So that's going to have a lot of links to on thecyberunion.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.